Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. Let's do a quick overview of the interface of this software so you can see where everything is. Now, we're not going to go into detail in this video, but just a bird's eye view of where all of the features and functions can be found so you can get acquainted with the interface. The first thing you'll notice is a big blank white area. We call that the canvas. This is, of course, where you will be designing the page. You'll be dragging and dropping objects onto this workspace, text, images, videos, and other web objects to design your page. We call that the canvas. In the top portion of the screen, you'll see some menus. We call these ribbon menus. They're divided into different categories, and I'll go over these in a few minutes. Also, you'll notice some palettes or some smaller windows on the sides of the screen. On my left, I have the toolbox palette. This lists all of the tools or the objects that I'll be using to design my page and pages with. These things we can just grab from the toolbox and drag them out onto the canvas. If I want a text object, I select text and I grab it and drag it onto the canvas. Same thing for images, photo galleries, and everything else. One of the other palettes we'll be using is the Object Manager, and I keep mine down here in the lower left. Mine is empty right now because I don't have any objects on my page. But in later videos, you'll see how this comes into play as a really critical feature in the software. To my right, I keep the palette called Site Manager open, and this is where I can have an overview of all of the files on my website or all of the pages. And in this case, I only have one page called index and there's nothing else. We haven't started building a website yet. So it's not unusual to see this say untitled for now. But as we begin to build and name things, this will change. And as we create pages, this will fill up. Below the site manager, I keep my properties inspector. That allows me to look at specific attributes of an object that's on my page. So for example, if I had an image on my page, let's put one out here. I grabbed the image tool from the toolbox and now I'm going to grab an image. Here's an image on my canvas. Because it's selected, the properties manager gives me the attributes of this image, its dimensions, its position, other things that I can change about its behavior. Or as I make changes to the canvas, the properties inspector reflects those changes. So this is an important palette as we're working with specific images or objects or text or whatever on our web page. So I'm going to select that object and delete it. Let's go back up to the top of the screen and talk about those ribbon menus. First, under the Home menu, you're going to see some features that are probably familiar to you. Cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, find and replace. These are going to do what you think they do. If you're familiar with any kind of word processing software or any kind of Windows software, unique to 90 Second Website Builder, of course, is the ability to preview and publish your work. So the preview button or the preview menu item is going to allow you to preview your work in a browser offline. In other words, you're going to preview your design work before you publish it to the internet. And so preview allows you to look at the layout or the, or the design of your page locally in a browser. Publish allows you to send your work or publish it. In other words, upload it to your web host. And we'll talk about these features in detail in other videos. Again, this is just an overview. Another part of the home menu will be access to things like the animations, which I have videos about as well. Let's go to the insert menu. You're going to see that the insert menu is quite robust, and that's because it lists all of the tools that are available to you for creating web pages. In fact, it's basically another way of looking at the toolbox. So while my toolbox I keep in this palette off to the left lists all of these tools, the insert menu is just another way to get to them. It's a little more visual, and so if you like seeing what you're doing this way, it might be a better option for you, but you can see all of the tools in a little different format by using this ribbon menu. If we go to the page menu, that's going to do just what you think, show us attributes of the page or the pages we're working with. In other words, this is where we can add new pages or import pages from other projects or rename a page or clone a page, etc. Anything in this menu will have to do with the actual uh, attributes of the page. Also, if we go over here back to the site manager, this is another view of the pages in our website because this is sort of a bird's eye view of all of the files in the site. It also has a miniature version of those same features. Here we can add pages, clone pages, 
and delete pages, etc., just like we can in the page menu. You'll notice there are multiple ways to get to features in 90 Second Website Builder just for your convenience. Also within the page menu will be things like access to the background of each page because each page can have its own. Also the page properties, which is a feature you're going to find yourself using quite a lot. As you learn to use the software, you'll find yourself going into the page properties. If we click on this, it brings up a window that shows us all of the attributes about this page from its dimension to its file extension. And there'll be a lot of information in the page properties. Don't worry if you don't understand all of this right now. Obviously, this is just an overview, but this is an important part of the software. You can also reach this page properties menu not only by clicking on this page properties button, but by right clicking on an empty part of the canvas and using this context menu and going right to page properties. It brings up the same thing. Again, multiple ways to get to the same information. The same is true for the page HTML. If you wanted to see the code or if you wanted to add code to your page, you can do that. If you have some third party snippet of code you want to add to the page, that's what the page HTML feature is for. There's also a global or site-wide feature for all of the pages. For example, if you wanted to affect the properties of every page to be the same globally in your website, you would use the site properties feature. Or if you wanted to add a snippet of code instead of to just one page, you would use the site HTML feature. So again, everything in this menu has to do with pages, whether it's the adding Google Analytics to your page, looking at the meta tags, looking at the page weight, which basically gives you an idea of how fast this page is going to load at certain internet speeds. Anything that has to do with pages will be found here. And of course, some of the most important aspects of a page is when you're making it responsive or mobile friendly. And those tools are found also under the page menu. We'll be adding breakpoints and variations. As you learn about responsive web design, these tools will be important to you. Also, another way to access these same tools is down at the bottom of the canvas. Here's another shortcut to the responsive design tools. And once again, I point out that there will be multiple ways to get to the same tools for your convenience. When we click on the view ribbon menu, this allows us to adjust our workspace. So depending on how you like to work, you can change the layout of the software. So for example, I told you I like to keep my toolbox here, my object manager here, I keep my site manager where I keep it. You can change all of those things. These are all palettes that can be moved, they can be hidden or shown. So for example, if I didn't want to see my toolbox, I could simply under the view menu, uncheck it and remove it from view. Now, in most cases, you are going to want to see it, but this is where you control what you see and what you hide. Also, you can affect the way the canvas works for you. For example, you can add some guides. I'll show you what that looks like. You'll notice these rulers at the top and the side of the canvas. They will come in handy as you're placing objects on the page. If they ever got in your way, you could turn them off and then toggle them back on. Another thing that they do is you can add what's called guides or ruler guides. I'm simply clicking my mouse on the ruler and dragging down and I've just added a line. This line is not visible to the end user. No one will see this on the page. This is just for my design mode. If I do it from the vertical ruler, I can make another line and I can add as many of these as I want. Well, these guides end up helping us. You can use them for lining objects up. You can even use them to snap objects to the line. So if we select this one, snap to the ruler guides. Any objects that I place in here will snap up to those lines and it just makes the layout process quicker and easier. And again, these are all decided upon here. Another thing you might want to do is add a grid. Again, this grid is invisible to the end user. It's not part of the web design, but in design mode, you can see I have little dots and I can adjust how big these are, how far apart they're spread within the view menu and in, within the guide settings tool. There are several other tools here we'll get into later that won't make sense to you until you learn how to use some of these. But as an overview, just know this is where you can adjust how you work with the canvas and how you work with the software, including zooming in and out and changing that perspective to make it easier for your design. I'm going to go ahead and remove these ruler guides. One of the ways I can do that is going up to the ruler guides tool and say clear all ruler guides. And I think I'm going to turn off this grid. We'll just do that for the sake of this video as we go to the Arrange menu. 
So while the page menu showed us attributes about the page or the sets of pages in our website, the arrange menu is more specific. These have to do with the actual objects on our page and their relationship to each other. So in other words, if I have a page with several objects on it, I can use the arrange menu to move these objects into place so that they line up, whether they're left edge or their right edge, or if I want them to be centered, or if I want them to be in front of or behind each other. I can also use the tools in the arrange menu to spread them out evenly or distribute them horizontally or vertically into the page. So the tools under the arrange menu have to do with how objects appear on the page in relationship to other objects. We can also use these tools to rotate objects, flip them around vertically and horizontally. We can group multiple objects into or merge them into one object to make them easier to deal with and even lock objects down on the page so we don't accidentally bump into them in the design mode. So the arrange tools help us deal with the objects on the page and how they relate in distance and dimension to each other. The tools menu helps us access specific applications within the software that help the software work as a whole. Don't confuse the tools menu with the toolbox. The toolbox are objects you place onto your canvas. The tools menu gives us access to some of the functionality of 90 Second Website Builder behind the scenes. So for example, there's access to the animation manager. Again, that's another video, but that's where this is. The backup manager is the tool that allows you to control and configure how the software backs up your data. Because as you're working, 90 Second Website Builder will make backups of your project and of your files. In case you make a mistake or lose something, you'll know there's a backup. Or you can configure how it backs up and where it backs up by using the Backup Manager. The Extension Manager is a tool that allows you to install third-party tools, third-party plugins. This is only available in the full version. If you're using the trial version right now, this Extension Manager will not apply to you but this is where it's accessible. As you're working with jQuery objects or jQuery user interface objects, those are based on what's called a theme. And this is where the theme manager is accessible. So you can manage the page theme and how it affects your jQuery. Same is true for if you're working with the mobile site builder, there is a theme manager that helps with the layout of your mobile websites for the look and the display of those objects. And again, part of the tools menu. The Assets Manager is basically a one-stop window where you can see all of the assets on your website in one place. An asset is anything that's part of your website, a video, a text object, an image, a form, anything that's that you can drag and drop onto the canvas is considered an asset. Well, if you have a website with dozens or hundreds of pages, you can easily manage those assets with the Asset Manager and see where those items are, what page they're on, and other information about each asset. The global replace is a good way to find and search something. If you want to replace a piece of text, for example, in multiple places in one fell swoop, you would use the global replace button to go and do that. You can make your site searchable by adding the search index so that it works well with the search tools. Also, the site map is something that Google wants to see for search engine optimization purposes, and you can generate that XML file. It's called with the site map tool. The style manager, something we'll be talking about in another video, has to do with how you style your hyperlinks and other things that you can style, uh, H1 tags and things like that. If these terms are foreign to you, don't worry about it. But for some people, you'll want to know where these are. And as you uncover some of the great tools in the software, you'll want to know that these exist. Verify links is a tool that lets you find if there are any broken links in your website and it will run a report and find anything that needs to be fixed and show you where that is. Under the Customize and Options tools, these are great because you can actually change the way, again, the interface works for you. If you don't like the way the color of the menu bar is, for example, or if you wanna switch a particular theme, you can do that. If you go to Options and then click on User Interface, you can literally change the color of the software and how it works. I won't go through all of these in this overview, but as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to view the screen. That's just one of dozens and dozens of things that you can configure in the options and uh, for the interface of the software. Under the help menu, that will be obviously where you can get support. If you click the actual help button, it will bring up the online documentation. This is basically everything you need to know about 90 Second Website Builder in text 
form. It's searchable. It's an index of every topic about the software, about every tool and every function. And you can look things up just like an encyclopedia, basically, of 90 Second Website Builder. And it's available to you at the click of a button. Also, if you want to just get to our website and get support that way, you can click either of these buttons and go to 90secondwebsitebuilder.com to get help. So I realize this is kind of a quick overview of how the software works. The rest of the videos will be more specific about each feature and each tool or each function, but this kind of gives you a lay of the land so that you can feel comfortable getting around the interface and start building websites now with 90 Second Website Builder.